So Jay Meher Baba, welcome to Fragrance of Love, a book reading of the lovely book Mehra. Today we are reading from page 75. The chapter is Post Office Days. So I started walking again, but I walked very slowly thinking, what am I to do? Where am I to go? In those days in Bombay, there was hardly a person or a car on the streets. And as I was walking so slowly and wondering what to do, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned and what do you think? I saw Baba. He was walking very quickly towards me with Gustadji and looking very stern. Baba passed me without saying a word, but I was so happy to see him. Baba was there, and so I did not feel lost anymore. Then Gustadji gestured to me to follow. A little further on, Baba turned into the street of a Parsi follower's house. They had a small shop with their house, and Baba went into the shop. I was still following Baba at a distance and I felt so relieved to see him go inside that I meant he was not going to the station. So I came to the gate of the house and waited, thinking, when Baba comes out, I'll follow him. I don't know where to go in Bombay and he hasn't told me to follow. And when Baba came out, he said to me, come on. So Baba and Gustadji walked ahead and I walked behind. I found that while Baba was at the Parsi's place, he had told one of the family to go to the station, which must have been quite near, to call Naja and Masaji back. So they too came back with Masaji still carrying the trunk on the top of his head. Only one minute more and Naja would have been on the train to Pune. How happy and relieved we felt. We had been very frightened when Baba sent us away. We did not want to go home. We wanted only to stay with Baba. So Baba saw that we obeyed his orders and every time you obey Baba, you please him and make him happy. We never asked Baba why this happened. There is always some reason with Baba. This little three paragraphs, I've just done a recap as it is a continuation. And now from the fresh start of page 75. One morning, Baba told us, put on some better saris. We are going for an outing. We were very excited. We had only been in our room and the kitchen at Bharucha building for quite some days and we were very happy to be going outside the house. Baba took us to a park called Victoria Gardens. This we found consisted of some gardens, a small zoo and a path where Baba could take a walk. Baba told us, I'm going for a walk. You all can do whatever you like. We knew that Baba did not want us to be with him that he wanted to walk alone. So we watched him stride away with that fast pace of his and we went to look at the nearby zoo. Unfortunately, we were there at the time the animals' cages were being cleaned and the smell was rather strong. When the cleaning was over, Baba had not yet returned, so we watched the zookeeper feed big chunks of meat to the lions. After perhaps an hour, Baba came back from his walk and we returned to Bharucha building. The next day, Baba again told us to put on better saris and we again took, and he again, sorry, took us to Victoria Gardens. Off he went for his walk and we once again watched the animals' cages being cleaned and the lions devouring their big chunks of meat. When on the third day, Baba told us that we were going out, I timidly asked, where are we going, Baba? Victoria Gardens? Baba replied. We had seen all that there has to be to see there and we must have looked a little dismayed because Baba changed his mind and took us somewhere else. I am telling this story about Victoria Gardens because Baba then told us of another time 
he had visited there when he was still known as Nairwan. It was much, much earlier at a time during those years between Baba Chand's kiss and Baba's long stay with Upasni Maharaj. Baba was in a different state in those days. He told us that he had stayed in Bombay for some time and that while there he had often walked to Victoria Gardens. On this particular day, a Parsi man with his family was sitting on one of the benches that Baba passed by on his walk. Suddenly, this Parsi man jumped up and slapped Baba's face, loudly accusing him of gazing at the women in his family. But Baba's stare was because of his state. We were so shocked. How humiliating this must have been for Baba. Baba was so pure and yet for our sakes, he had to put up with being misunderstood like this. I remember another outing that Baba took us on while we were at Bharucha building. Chanji in bracket, Faram Rose Dada Chanji, who at this time had recently come to Baba, owned a cinema in Bombay and of course, he wanted Baba to visit this cinema. One day Baba again told us, put on your good saris, we are going to the cinema. Another outing? How happy we felt. We were very young then and still new to Baba and not yet accustomed to the cloistered life that we were beginning to lead. Naturally, Chanji gave Baba the very best seats and we all sat upstairs in a private box. This was the first film we had seen for a long time and it was a very good silent one about, I still remember, Mary Antoinette and the French Revolution. We were engrossed in the story when all of a sudden Baba got up and told us we were leaving. I was very surprised. I did not know then that Baba had this habit of walking out in the middle of films. So we left with Baba and as we were going out to and as we were going out, we kept glancing over our shoulders to try to catch a glimpse of that film. Meher Baba returned to Mehrabad from Barucha building in Bombay in late January 1925 and a new phase of his work began. He was in residence at Mehrabad for the next two years until late November 1926 and this period has sometimes been called the first great stay at Mehrabad. Mehrabad was now transformed from a deserted military camp into a thriving settlement. Manli, who had been sent to their homes, began to return. Baba opened Meher Charitable Dispensary and Hospital, began the Hazrat Baba Jan School, gave darshan to the large crowds who were now coming every Thursday and had built many temporary buildings of bamboo matting at what is now Lower Meherabad to house the new residents and activities. Baba stayed in the tiny stone room across the road from the post office known as the Jopri. He supervised every detail of the activities at Mehrabad and during this intensely busy phase, Baba fasted, wrote the book, lit the dhuni for the first time and began his silence. Mehra, Dalatmai, Naja and small Khorshid returned to the post office and were joined by big Khorshid. In bracket, Baba's sister-in-law, Suna Masi, in bracket, small Khorshit's mother, and from time to time, Daula Masi, in bracket, Baba's aunt. Mani also came to stay during her school holidays, accompanied by Shirin Mai. As always, since joining Baba, they slept on mats on the floor. Amidst the hustle and bustle of Mehrabad, their lives were very scheduled. A bamboo matting fence was built to enclose the post office and they did not leave this compound. Except for Baba and Gustaji who had a storeroom on the post office veranda, men were forbidden to enter their quarters. After our return to Mehrabad, Baba for some reason decided to send us to Sakori for a few days. We got ready to leave, then went to say goodbye to Baba who was waiting for us on the post office veranda. Baba came first to my mother. Take care of yourselves and look after your health, he told her, 
and then Baba embraced her. Baba then turned to Naja. Naja, come here. I'll embrace you because you are my cousin. And Baba embraced Naja. And now I won't embrace anyone else, he said. I was standing there and I cannot describe the how I felt. I just ran away. I wanted Baba to embrace me too. But he embraced only my mother and Naja, not me. And then we left for Sakori. This is a picture of Baba's birthday celebration at the post office veranda. Meher Baba's birthday celebration on the Meherabad post office veranda in 1925. Baba is seated and the women standing behind Baba are Daulat Mai, Small Khorshit, Dina Talati, Gul Mai, Baba's mother Shireen Mai and Pila Mai of Karachi. Behind Gulmai and Shirin Mai are standing sisters Freni and Mehra and Padri's mother Freni Masi, who is partially out of view, behind Shirin Mai and Pilamai. The young child standing to Baba's left to his sister is Mani. On Baba's right holding a child is Khan Saab, Baba's uncle Faredun with long beard, bracket long beard, Masaji and Bairamji. Gustachi is standing to Baba's right with his arm across his chest. And Kekashru Masa is seated at Gustadji's right. Ramju and Rustam K. Irani are by far left Pandal pole, and Padri is behind Gustadji and Dalit Mai. Page 79. I believe it was on our return from that short trip to Sokori that we stayed at Akbar Press in Ahmednagar before returning to Mehrabad. We spent four days there and then took a Tonga back, a distance of perhaps five miles. On reaching Mehrabad, we heard that Baba was coming on foot from Ahmednagar. In those days, there were no buses or rickshaws, so the only way to travel from Ahmednagar to Mehrabad was in a Tonga, by bicycle or on foot, and many times Baba has walked that distance. By now, a lot of the villagers from the nearby Arangao loved Baba and to show their love for him, they went with drums and bells to welcome Baba back to Mehrabad. We were eager to catch a glimpse of Baba returning and what a sight we saw. There was Baba looking so lovely, striding along the road to Mehrabad, while around him a throng of villagers joyfully danced and sang to the rhythm of their drums and bells. On Baba's 31st birthday in February 1925, we were to get up at around 2 a.m. But at that hour, I could not open my eyes. What's happening, please? I asked when awakened. Hurry, Mehra, get up. It's Baba's birthday, the girls told me. Oh, yes, Baba's birthday. I remember. And I jumped out of my bedding and quickly got ready. It is our tradition to make pretty designs with powdered colored chalk on the ground at the entrance of the house and to hang freshly made garlands over the doorway on special occasions. So in the early, early morning, I helped with the chalk designs and made the garland for the doorway. In 1925, Baba's birthday was celebrated down the hill. As I said, as I have said, in those days, the hill was out of bounds and no one was allowed to cross the railway line. Baba had his bath quite early and then my sister's husband, Rusta, picked him up in his arms and carried him to a chair. Baba looked so sweet with his beautiful hair loose, but it was cold at that hour of the day and he must have been feeling, and he must have been feeling chilly after taking a bath and then sitting in the open with just a thin sadra on. Someone, realizing this, put a shawl around Baba. Handfuls of people from Ahmednagar, Arangao and Pune had gathered at Mehrabad for Baba's birthday. And each one wanted to wash Baba's feet. A big basin was placed under his feet and the men's turn was first. One by one, they poured a little water on Baba's feet and then touched them. Baba was gesturing, hurry, hurry. 
He did not want people to make a fuss about taking his darshan and kissing his feet. He always wanted everything to be fast. And Baba sat in the cold and allowed this because his devotees wanted to wash his feet and to celebrate his birthday. Then the women were called. So we girls one by one poured water on Baba's feet and lightly touched them. Some splashed the water that had touched Baba's feet on their faces and their eyes. For the first time, Baba allowed us to wash his feet on his birthday. So we'll take a short pause here in the reading and see if anyone has some interesting story or anecdote about Nehra or the women Mandli to share. Jai Baba, Meher Krupaji, Rita Ji, Gita Ji. Meher Kripaji, do you have any story, anything to share about Mehra or the women Mandli? I'm sure you have tons of them. Jai Baba. Your video is off. Jai Baba. Your video is Jai Baba. Jai Baba, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Could you put on your video? Uh, madam, want to share? I'm not dressed up well. <laughs> Just oh, relax. That's fine. Okay, fine. Uh, uh, I will just share a small incident uh, when these people were in Nasik. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay. So when uh, all this women mainly were in Nasik, those were initial days, very old days before Mehrabad Ashram starts. And uh, at that time, Baba went on uh, Europe tour first time. And he took um, Iran visa because that was the only available without signing. Baba had stopped signing at that time. And uh, because he is going abroad, he, th he brought all the people from Mehrabad. Full ashram was shifted to Nasik because he said, this is the safest place in my absence for all the women to stay in. And when Brahmin lady's house was uh, taken on rent and all the women, that time six of them, Pilamai and Kulmai and Mehra, uh, these five, six women were only there. And they were kept in that, it is it was called as pigeon house. That house, that bungalow, little bungalow was called as a pigeon house. And they were kept there. There was a beautiful garden in front of that uh, one part of that house. Uh, the, the kitchen was outside the, the room and their washroom toilet was also outside. And uh, they were under strict seclusion. And they were asked not to see any men. And various um, orders were given by Baba. And so much strict seclusion was there for them that they were not going anywhere. Only for going to the kitchen and to the toilet, they used to come out of their rooms. But not even the garden in front of their house there also, they were not going. So when Baba went um, uh, uh, for his tour, so he gave one uh, lecture given by Vivekananda on God realized. And he asked Mehra to recite it daily. That lecture given by Vivekananda on God realization. And that was given by Meher Baba to Mehra and Baba uh, ordered her to read it daily. And so she kept it practice all the days long, many days, many months. And even though Baba came after that, still it was going on. And then uh, once she asked Baba, Mehra Maya asked Baba, Mehra was very young at that time, and Baba was also, and she asked uh, that, Baba, I am reading all this, uh, so shall I continue or stop? So Baba told her, now you can stop. Baba wanted her to get occupied in his absence. They were teaching all their clothes on their own, and they were not going out anywhere. anywhere. And Sayyid's wife and uh, friendly used to do the purchasing for them. Their clothes, everything stitching, they used to do at home only. So when she, uh, Mehra asked Baba, 
uh, so baba asked her to stop the reading then immediately she asked can i keep this anything they used to ask baba all the things whatever you want to do even sanitary napkins you cannot hide you have to list it out baba ordered it specifically there is one incident to that effect also so the so someone wanted to buy and uh, she were hesitant and that the price was increased in the list baba used to check what has been brought bought from the market the list and price baba used to check and then he found out the difference and the high, and then he fired that person who had gone for the marketing that why there is a difference and then hesitantly then uh, he told that uh, some lady means uh, woman manlis name that she wanted some item some item he was not telling and then finally baba somehow got it from him and then he ordered if you want you can buy you have to be hygienic but you have to write it you have to tell me see so to that so uh, to come to the point sorry uh, so when uh, mehra asked baba baba can i keep this the paper baba had given of the vivekananda speech on god realization and baba immediately said no 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 you cannot keep it and baba took it away from him from her baba took it out from her so she says now uh, somewhere oh that i regret that i should have written it somewhere i don't have that paper and i don't remember what it was that is one thing <laughs> and if you have some time i can tell one more yeah, incident yeah, sure 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 so uh, again nasik stories i'll tell most of them nasik early days 19 20 from 1919 first baba went to nasik and from 1922 more than 10 years up to 42 baba had gone many times and stayed there and visited and women ashram was there five years and mehra mai tells that more, more than mehrabad and mehrazad if we have stayed any place so longer is nasik they were kept in jiaz manzil also they were kept in this pigeon house also and there when baba used to baba was very busy and touring and going india and all so many things he was doing so rapidly on his own and uh, to make them occupy he used to tell something so when baba went on a tour uh, as we all know this women mandli wanted to perform a show for baba wanted to to do a play to entertain baba when he comes back those days as per baba's orders saros cinema uh, sorry not saros cinema uh, baba had got constructed a cinema hall in nasik and that hall's name was meher cinema and collector had come to inaugurate it and 2025 of uh, government officials had come to for the inauguration ceremony uh, so there uh, saros talk uh, now that talk is is uh, even now it is there in nasik it is uh, in the name of circle cinema now they call it circle cinema but that square is still famous in the name of meher square and there is a hotel it is also named as meher hotel uh, okay so uh that baba was telling all his men and women mandli that i don't have money to look after you you can go away lead your life i will find the perfect matches for you but no one left baba so baba said i will not feed anyone free of charge i don't have money to maintain you so if you want to be with me the life will be very 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 hard it will not be simple luxury life and everyone will have to earn everyone will have to do something to earn money and then they were asked to work in saroj garage and that cinema hall and uh, pendu kaka and all they were uh, given a training to run the project uh, and all that so this women mandli baba frequently used to take them for watching the film in that circle cinema now it is called circle cinema so in baba's absence women though were not permitted to go out anywhere but they were permitted to go to the cinema hall and watch the movie 
So there was a Laila Majnu movie. And Meramai tells that we've watched that Laila Majnu film 12 times or 14 times, right? So they wanted to perform the similar play in front of Baba. And every time they will go watch a film, first, then sometimes they will um, see how they are dressed up and how are their clothes, what are the dialogues. And they went and they asked someone to feature those days at the station, you will get the lyrics of the film in a booklet form. There will be a small book. So they got it bought, they, they bought the book also to learn those film songs. But in all doing this, always back of mind, the thought for Baba was there. Oh, Baba will like this. Oh, we'll do for Baba like this. They didn't watch film just as a film, but they did so minute observation. And then uh, uh, Frenny bought, uh, uh, no, Sayyid's wife bought a trunk full of clothes for them. And there was velvet uh, cloth also. So out of those clothes, they made the perfect uh, dresses as were worn, shown in the film. And uh, Mehra Mai played the uh, role of Majnu. And uh, Laila, uh, Mani Mai played the role of Laila. And they, they made their own uh, outfits. They all made it by hand stitch and all that. And when Baba came, they performed that play in front of Baba. And uh, Mehra Mai, at one point, why I'm telling in so much detail, no? At one point, the someone goes to change, the dress to be changed. So there is a gap. And you are just giving a live performance in front of Baba. So what Mehra Mai did, she sang the song and she danced. So well, she danced and sang a song. Just imagine, all are there preparing for themselves and <coughs> Baba is sitting and Merama is dancing in front of him. Not <laughs> just imagine how the that uh, scene must be. And so then uh, the next role, the one who was there, they came and it started. So it was twice she did this pattern because she was playing a role of Majnu. So they didn't have to do much makeup or something like that but baba was so amused so happy and he was wondering and child like so innocent and he asked them oh how did you do this how you know this because they are not going out of the house so how where from you got it and all that amazement and he was so happy so he had asked them to do this perform this play in front of men Men also, they are, then there was a great, um, it was then staged in the theater, but not for public, for men all were called. And then Mehra Mai said, because it comes here, you must be wondering why I'm telling so much. So Mehra Mai, when it come to perform in front of male, uh, men womanly, then Mehra Mai told that I will play my role because it is of Majnu, but I will not dance in front of this man. I will not sing or dance in front of them. Those two dances which she had done. And then, uh, I, sorry, I forgot the name. She requested uh, someone else to do it. And then she did those dance and uh, this. But uh, in front of men, when it, the play was played, Mehra didn't dance. On her own, she decided and she didn't dance. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Such it wonderful was stories. And in these minute uh, ways, uh, it so beautifully tells us how meticulous they were to see through every small thing that would please Baba. And to not yeah. do any smallest of the thing that would displease Baba. Displease him. And right. how, how in consciously trying their mm. best for that, uh, mm. you know. It is, it is so amazing. Uh, what kind of grace would they have that Baba, mm. I, I, you know, humanly, I don't think it's possible to put somebody at the forefront 24-7 unless Baba's grace is there. 
and to each of these manvi to mehra to everyone the amount of grace that could have just been there for them to put baba in front for everything and irrespective of what they did to have just baba in their heart and back of the mind all the time i can't yeah. i can't imagine the gallons of grace that would have just gone for baba to just infuse each one with <laughs> it was a patience patience great patience for baba to mend all the mandali to his tune great patience he had shown and smallest details thank you jai baba jai baba so we'll continue reading page 80 everyone we all had our work to do i attended to baba naja cooked and we all helped her by cleaning the rice and dal and washing the pots and pans then we had the room to sweep sewing to do and so on baba had told my mother to repeat god's name for an hour every day so she also had to do Baba was very fond of chutney and one of the duties that he had given me was to prepare the chutney to accompany his rice and dal. It was a very simple one of just garlic salt and a little red chili ground together. I too loved chutney but Baba now told me that I was not to eat it. One day the food was ready and Baba was seated on his rug on the floor. I served the chutney to him and he quickly tasted it. Who made the chutney baba asked I did baba you told me to make the chutney i replied but there's no salt in it oh i said i thought i put some in no said baba it needs salt why didn't you taste it before giving it to me baba i replied you told me not to eat chutney so how could i taste it jai baba eating is one thing and tasting it another you must taste what you give me otherwise how will you know if it is done properly you must make sure that you serve me what you serve me sorry tastes right you can't just serve me anything so from today you are to taste it yes baba i replied and from that day i tasted the chutney sometimes we want to obey baba but in doing so we make more mistakes baba was showing me that i should have used my common sense and that i was to take more care about what i gave him as i have mentioned baba told my mother to meditate by repeating god's name for one hour each day and while we did our household work she would sit on the carpet in our room and quietly repeat god's name At this time Mani was a young child of perhaps 6. She had come from Pune to stay with us for some days and she was mischievous and full of fun. That reminds that yesterday uh, 19th August 1996 was the day Mani my merged with her beloved god brother Meher Baba. Yesterday was her death anniversary. when it came for when it came time for my mother to meditate mani saw how serious my mother looked as she sat repeating god's name but mani did not take her meditation seriously at all in short mani could not resist teasing my mother she knew that dolat my loved to hear persian spoken and although mani could not speak this language she is a very good mimic and could imitate the intonation of persian in such a way that she sounded as though she were speaking it so mani began to speak pretend persian to my mother and dolat mai was so fascinated by mani that she stopped meditating and turned around to listen to her at that moment baba came into the room he immediately saw what mani was up to and he seemed very upset come here he told her mani was very startled for baba did not look at all pleased with her she went over to him and this is how baba punished her he took a cooking pot from the shelf and put it on mani's head 
poor money. It went right over her eyes, down to her ears, and she could hardly see. Now come and stand in this corner and remember this punishment, Baba told her. Never again interrupt people's prayers. Didn't you know she was praying? Why did you interrupt her? Now turn your back and Baba left the room. So Mani stood in the corner, feeling very ashamed of herself. A little later, small Khorshad came into the room and when she saw Mani standing in the corner with a pot on her head, Mani looked very funny. Khorshad started to laugh. At that moment into the room came Baba again. <laughs> what are you laughing at? He asked Khorshad. Mani looked so funny standing there with a the pot on her head, Khorshad replied. Oh, so you think she looks funny, do you? said Baba. Then come here. And he took another pot and put it on Khorshed's head. Now you can both stand in the corner, he told them. They both looked so funny that we had to quickly leave the room before we too started to laugh. So Baba taught them their lessons not to interrupt others' prayers and not to laugh at others' misfortunes. And their punishment was itself funny. It appealed to Baba's sense of humor. It was not Baba's way to punish them by slapping them. Of course, Baba then embraced them and they were completely forgiven. One day Baba was sitting on the veranda of the post office. As I have said, Baba seldom came into our room. He always sat on the veranda. Someone whom I do not know had given Baba a gold ring and on this day Baba sent Gostadji to our room to tell us that whoever had a gold ring should give it to Baba and that Baba would give another in exchange. One, only two of us had gold rings. I had the one that Upasni Maharaj had given me and Big Khorshad had a lovely one with a design on it. I tried and tried to get mine off but it would not come off my finger. And Big Khorshid's was her wedding ring. Gustadji went out and told Baba that mine would not come off my finger. And Baba sent him back to, t back to us, telling him that he was to bring Baba a ring. So again I tried and tried, and at last the ring came off my finger. Gustadji took it out to Baba, and after a few minutes Baba came into our room, holding both rings in his hand. Resting on a windowsill in our room, we had Baba's photograph and two silver vases. We kept flowers in the vase and each morning, we would bow down to Baba's photo. Baba now stood in front of his photo and said to me, take this ring and keep it. And he put the ring on my finger. It was the ring that I had just given to Baba that had been given to me by Upasni Maharaj in Sakori, and I realized that Baba wanted to put that same ring on my finger with his own hands. He then put the other ring, the one that someone had given to him, on the same finger. It was a very beautiful ring with Baba's name inscribed on it, and he told me, wear it always, which I do. So both the rings that I wear are from Baba. Once Chanji, who, as I have said, had a cinema business in Bombay, brought a film called Sant Saku for Baba to see. It is the beautiful story of a woman who was, like Meera, a saint. Baba decided to show it on Upasni Maharaj's birthday in May 1925, and he invited all the village people to see the film. When it started, we girls quickly made our way up to where Baba was sitting and sat behind him. Baba was very close to us and Naja quietly reached out and touched his sadra, and sadra very lightly. Then small Kharshad did the same. I thought, if they can touch Baba's sadra, why shouldn't I? So I also reached out and touched Baba's sadra. I hardly touched it. I just lightly put my finger on a loose fold in it. When immediately, Baba turned around and demanded, Who touched my sadra? It was so embarrassing. 
with the crowd there to have to say that I was the one and of course Baba gave me a, sound, a good scolding. Why did you do that? He asked. Are you in the habit of touching men's clothes? He made it so difficult for me. No, Baba, I replied. I never done it before. This is the first time. The other girls, Naja and Khorshid, could do something like this and Baba did not mind. But he was very, very strict with me. Baba was so fond of sports, especially cricket. And with cricket, he was very particular about the rules. One morning, some extra men had come from Ahmednagar so that there were enough for a cricket match. And Baba was in a very happy mood. Get ready, he said. We'll have a game of cricket. While the Mandli were setting up the wickets, Baba came into our room and told me, Quickly tie my hair back. I have to play cricket. I ran to the ribbon box, chose a nice satin ribbon, and while Baba held his hair for me, I tied it back with a pretty bow. As Baba's sadra was always open a little down in the front, open a little down the front, it was loose at the back and the nape of his beautiful neck was showing. When Baba walked away from our room, he looked so lovely from the back, so slim, with his brown hair shining and curling and a pretty bow resting on his fair neck. Baba was very serious about cricket and since to play well one needs to be able to move freely, he tucked his sadra into his pants. From afar we watched him play. Baba looked very beautiful in the sunlight, playing so intently. I especially loved to watch him run. Some time later, at the end of 1926, when Baba took us to Lunavla and then Bombay for a month, we again saw him play. It was in Lunavla and it was quite a short game. Baba's mother Shirin Mai was there and also my mother and Gulmai and my sister. Baba did not like us to stare when men were playing, so from the veranda of our house, we peeked from behind our elder at Baba playing in the garden. Baba was strong and very in those days, and he was an all-rounder, good at batting, bowling, and wicket-keeping. One day, when we had first come to the post office and before the bamboo matting fence was built, we saw Baba walking across the field and we could hear him singing beautifully as he walked. Baba stopped singing and came towards us where we were cooking and working on the post office veranda. Do you know how fortunate you are to be with me at this time? During these days, he asked us. Yes, Baba, I, we replied. But at that time, we did not really know how fortunate we were. Now we appreciate those days when Baba was still talking and singing. We had no idea that Baba would keep silence for 44 years and how we would miss his talking and singing and laughing. Sometime later, Baba told us, that from 15th June 1925, he would keep silence for his work. But this is what happened. Sparrows had made a nest in the roof of the post office and it had become infested with lice. Gulmai came from Ahmednagar to spray the lice. But while she was standing on a ladder, it slipped from her under her and she fell and was slightly hurt. It was because of Gulmai's fall that Baba postponed the commencement of his silence until 10th July 1925. On 9th July 1925, Baba came, in, came to our room. Baba was staying in the Jopri and he had not been coming to see us at all lately. Now I think it was so that we should get used to not seeing him so that we should not miss him too much. He told us, from tomorrow, 10th July, I will observe silence and when my work is finished, I'll talk. You are all to stay cheerful and happy and to take care of your health and to obey my orders. By telling us like this, Baba made us feel that this silence was not very serious in order that we should not feel sad. 
Baba said that we were to put our warm jackets on in the evening when it was cold and we were not to gargle with cold water and that we were to remember whatever other orders he had given us. He also told us that we were to cook for Baba Jan high school children and to make sure that we cooked properly for them. We were not to think of them as village children, but as our own, and to cook for them with love and care. Baba's love for the poor was so beautiful. He then told us that he would not be coming to see us and reminded us to be happy and to obey his orders. Baba then turned to me and told me that he would also be fasting for some time and that every day I should boil one big cup of milk and send it to him. He said I was to see that the milk did not smell of onion or garlic, so after that I did not touch onion or garlic. I was also to make for him a hot green chili pepper slit and stuffed with chopped garlic and salt, then fried. Naja helped me with this as I could not touch the garlic. From that time on, I took care that my hands did not smell of anything, not even kerosene from the store. Before I touched Baba's cup, I kept the milk and chili ready so that when one of the girls came rushing in to say, Padri is waiting for Baba's milk and chili, I could quickly boil the milk and freshly fry the chili. So Baba was on fast of just one cup of milk and a chili a day at the beginning of his silence. He must have been doing some very special work at that time. From 10th July, we heard a new sound. It was the sound of loud claps. Oh, it must be of Baba clapping to draw the attention of the Mandli, we realized. Those first days of keeping silence must have been very difficult for Baba. Baba was outgoing. He loved to talk, to sing and to laugh. And he was not used to being silent. Baba had so much work and he still supervised everything and saw to everything. Nothing was done without consulting him. So naturally, he would want to talk, but he did not. It was very, very difficult for Baba. It is so natural to laugh, but when the manli around him said something funny, Baba could not laugh out. He covered his mouth with a kerchief to remind himself not to make a sound. Baba put so much strain on himself. At first, Baba wrote very quickly on a slate, as those around him could not understand his gestures. I remember that he used English and Gujarati. Now at night, when I think of darling Baba, I wonder if he sang out loudly in the Jopri just before 12 o'clock on 9th July. He loved singing, and he knew that in a few minutes, he would no longer be able to sing for the rest of his life. We took Baba's silence very lightly at that time. When at the very first Baba had told us about it, he had said that when his work was finished, he would talk. So we thought, oh yes, seven days will pass and then Baba will talk. But when seven days went by and Baba did not talk, and then we waited and waited. And now it was seven months and still Baba was silent. This was serious to us and we asked each other, when will Baba speak? We missed his voice, his talking, Baba's beautiful singing and his cheerfulness. One day we asked Baba, we, when shall we hear your, your lovely voice Baba? When shall we hear you sing and talk again? And Baba replied on his slate, I'll talk again when I finish my work. Baba kept giving us hope so that we would not feel hopeless. But for the next 44 years, Baba kept silence. Our compound had for some time been barricaded with bamboo matting and a big temporary kitchen made of bamboo matting with a tin roof was built in our enclosure. Many new people were now coming from Ahmednagar for Baba's darshan and they were curious about us. Baba quietly had this fence put up 
and we were happy about it. We did not go outside it, and no man except Baba and Gustadji could come inside. The new kitchen had five wood burning fireplaces, and in this kitchen, the food for the Baba Jan high school children was cooked. My mother supervised the work. She showed Naja and the girls the right proportions of dal and rice, spice and garlic to use for so many people, and then they cooked it on these fireplaces. There was a lot of work to do. We had no running water, just a tub with a tap inside our compound, some distance from the kitchen, and there was much running back and forth to wash the rice and dal. Then it had to be cooked in a big pot, sorry, then it had to be cooked in big pots over these fires, and the heat was terrific. The fires were very hot and very smoky, and the tin roof would get very hot. Every day food for more than 100 people had to be cooked and it was to be ready by 10 o'clock in the morning. So everyone was very busy, all rushing to get their work done. Jai Meher Baba. So if anyone has any sweet story, Something to share, Jai Baba Rosalie. I have yeah, I, one, one thing that struck me was uh, Mara used to say that Baba being silent was his crucifixion. She didn't talk about the accidents, she said it was his crucifixion. Uh, I believe that for sure. Yes, uh, so beautiful. Uh, and with these words, we can relate to what, uh, you know, uh, we just read that Baba so much loved his singing, his laughing, his talking, and to sacrifice for us the things that he most loved doing with us was definitely... He didn't have nice. many pleasures. And then, then after the, ac the second accident, he couldn't even walk, so... Uh, I think walking was one of his big pleasures. Yes. And talking and joking. Yeah, just gone. I, yeah. Yeah. I always have a smile watching Baba's videos at the pace that he walks. And in some where he's holding somebody's hand, where they are to hold his hand to walk, but he's pacing faster than them and they are almost being dragged behind. And it's so sweet and funny to, uh, you know, just see that how Baba did small things to help us uh, feel, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I, I, I can't put it in words. This entire thing of, you know, being very person next door and then at the same time being the God for all of them. And I remember this one uh, small uh, incident from Lord, Lord Meher where uh, I think it was after the first accident uh, that Baba is lying on the uh, cot and uh, the men, only few of them are outside on the veranda or something. And uh, Baba's brother is there as well. And they're discussing of how, uh, you know, uh, being God, Baba has to suffer this just as humans. And just like humans, how Baba has to take our help to walk and, you know, uh, kind of the helplessness of how a human feels. Even God has to experience that coming down amidst us. Uh, and uh, just then uh, they hear a clap. And uh, I think it is... Uh, I think it is Jal, or I, I, I don't remember exactly, but it is Baba's brother who is there in the conversation. And uh, Baba claps, and when uh, he goes near the cot, uh, Baba pushes him with one finger, and he's thrown across to the door. And uh, Baba uh, kind of gestures in connection to the context of their conversation, which was outside, which was supposedly that Baba couldn't hear because he was sleeping inside. And Baba gestures that never forget 
I am God. <laughs> so it 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 just so beautifully uh, reminds of these small things of Baba loving the chutney, Baba, uh, you know, loving uh, this uh, combination. And what could be the reasons for having a milk and a chili stuffed uh, thing? But <laughs> you know, I feel. Uh, there would be a reason in that also for Baba to have that during his fast. Um, yes. Dan, would you like to share anything? Okay. I have something to yes, share. Cindy. <clears throat> yes, Cindy. I've only been to India once and it was in 2012 and I met Meru. This is the only woman, Mandali, that I, I met. And it was on the porch in Marizad. And she was wearing a red, like, chenille sweater and she was very cold. <clears throat> and she said that the, the us, us people from America brought the cold. <clears throat> I didn't think it was cold. And, but I mean, what did I know? And just to listen to her talk, that was my one and only experience of sitting on the porch listening to, um, to stories about Baba. And then it was time for my group to leave. So I went up to Marrow and I knelt and I said, Whatever I said, I said something to the effect of it was such an amazing gift to see the same face that Baba saw and hear the voice that Baba heard. And she took my face into her hands and she said, oh, no, child, no, it's not about me at all. It's not about my face or my voice. It's only about Baba, only about Baba. And um, and I, I mean, I can remember that that feeling of being kneeling in front of her with her hands on my face, looking at me, telling me that the focus is on Baba, not her or anyone else. And that experience was, I, I had expected when I had was going to meet Mondali that it was going to be some sort of explosive skyrockets and flight energetic experience. And what it was, was vast, vast sense of oneness and peace. And wow. just like pure alignment and and space and grace um it's not even describable but that was that was that's my only women mandali story <laughs> and it's still i can still remember the moment and and the vivid color red and then i found out um a few weeks later she had a stroke and then she passed on and i was so grateful for the experience to have to have had her direct me back to god Thank you. So you you were not there when she passed. No. You wouldn't see that. Yeah. I it triggered off a, an incident with Meru. Uh, Meru was so beautiful. She reminded me really of an American Indian. Just just and she had such ability. She would play games with people, but she was just she was really good. She wasn't uh, sort of good. She was amazing. Well, one day uh, she would always be on the porch usually when Mara was there. And uh, one day I, 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 I asked Mara if I could take a rose from Baba's bedroom. And she said, yes, I could. So I, I took this big red rose and, uh, and I came out on the porch and Meru, with full force, uh, said, Rosalie, that is not your rose. And all I said was, Mara said I could have it. And she, just as quick as she noticed I had it, and how, why did I have it? She let it go like I'd never said anything. So, uh, you know, uh, you know, the focus was on Baba, but, you know, Mara was like, she was like Baba, the female side of God, for all I can, uh, my understanding. Yeah, I don't. Uh, uh, but anyway, I. Uh, there was such pure, uh, there was a purity like. Uh, uh, in the interactions with them and uh and it was very helpful because i had an interaction with padre that was very unpleasant and uh, you know but i could appreciate his purity i still disagreed with him but 
you know, they were so uh, they were so focused on Baba that uh, it brought a purity. It brought purity. I, I guess you have to be careful what you focus on, <laughs> as we know. <laughs> Sitting here in Maya. <laughs> yeah. So true. So true. And that was really beautiful, Cindy. Uh, thank you for sharing. And so intimate and so, uh, you know, it is like telling you individually, but telling all of us how important it is that the focus is always Baba. And I think especially uh, this rings true right now with all that we are doing to all the time know that it is for Baba and for Baba within each of us. And uh, I feel that even while during our artis and things that, you know, when we are appreciating and when we are loving each other's sharing, it is the Baba within us that is loving it and the Baba within them who is performing it. And that's, that's so beautiful to always have that Baba is there in each and everything that we are transacting through these lovely sessions and every other work opportunity that Baba gives us to do, mm. you know. And, and I think, I think so go ahead. Oh. Yes, indeed. And I think that's like, um, it's, it's good work to do that because I love people so much. Like I, I do love people so much and I love children and I love playing and I feel such big feelings. And I have to keep remembering that what I'm feeling is love for God not love for like i can enjoy the personality and delight in it and what god made but when i get attached or think that that's the glory not the 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 essence of god then i'll i get i get stuck so it's it's a wonderful thing to love people so much i really really do and to keep remembering why i love people is because i love god and that's where that's this is the the mere shadow of what it is to to love God. So true, so true. Thank you so much. That was really beautiful. Okay, so we will close the session with our uh, Meher Dhun, followed by the Australian Arti, and then say Aftar Meher Baba Ki Jai three times and Jai Mehra Meher. Yeah, what, did, uh, what does that word Dune mean? Because I only know Duni. I know okay. So the yeah. dun, dun is the repetition uh, which has been created, which was also played on the Amartiti and all. This Meher Baba, 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 Meher Baba. Meher Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba, Meher Baba. So this is called Dhun. Dhun in Hindi is melody. So a repetitive melody of sorts. And this has been named as the Meher Dhun. It's like a job. Yes. Yes. Because Baba's name would be the best. Correct. Correct. It put into uh, melody. Uh, you yes. can do better. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's called Meher Dun. So we have this little nice uh, video of all lovely Meheras and women monthly photographs on the Dun with Baba. And then we we'll followed by the Australian art. If you all want. Would you all want the Australian art as well? Yes. Yes, please. Then, okay, I think they are both two different ones. Okay, let me just play the one right now.
Satan, God's free world's main thing. Destroy this ignorance that life sustains. These five lights are the whirling spokes of breath of the world's will that bears me on to death. Unless you are infinitely kind, break the will of which is conditioned mind. This incense is my love, these fruits my heart. Which to please you I have shaped from my heart. Accept them as you would a simple flower that has no use beyond its shining out. You are myself, I sing to you in praise. And beg your love to bear me through the day Till you, the ever-living perfect one Illume my darkness with your shining sun Avatar Meher Baba Ki Jai We'll have one minute of silence अवतार महर बाबा की जय 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 अवतार महर बाबा Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, I hope I, we can continue. Maybe by Monday or so we'll decide. Wonderful. <laughs> Whatever, Whatever is in Baba's chip plan is lovely. Yes. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Have, sleep well. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Jai Meher Baba. Jai Meher Baba. Have a lovely day in his love and see you tomorrow for the Seven Realities Meditation. That's right. See you. Jai Baba.